last time on the Property Guys podcast, it was Glenn's birthday. Yes. Today is not his birthday at all. No, not at all. But we do have another podcast with Property Guys. I'm Frederick. I'm Glenn. And today we're going to talk we're about... Guys. <laughs> See? Communication. Communication. Effective communication. Yeah. So we have found through life experiences in uh, real estate, in negotiations, in our relationships, and in life that communication probably is the most important tool oh, that you can have. Absolutely. Uh, to you know, handle day to day life and business and relationships. So um, let's talk a little bit about. Some of the ways, at least in real estate, we'll start with that. Okay. How communication works and what works well and what doesn't. So, why don't you start this one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the things that we have learned is that when you're dealing with somebody on the other end in a real estate transaction, whether it's an agent, whether it's a buyer or a seller, everybody likes to communicate in a different way. Okay. Right? Yeah. So some people, they want to be, they want their hand held. They want a phone call. Yes. They don't want a text. The text will kind of upset them. They want to call. It says, hi, I'm thinking about you. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Right? And then some people are so busy and they're not very good on the phone and they prefer a text. And so that's one of the things I think that we're getting better at deciphering. Um, we've had some uh, interesting situations with texting lately. We won't get into all the specifics, but texting is a very interesting animal. It is. Right? So yeah. I can call Glenn and say, hey, Glenn, you know what? I really think that we should write a higher offer. I think you're approaching this completely wrong. And here's why. And it'll have a certain tenor to it where he's not going to take it personal. But if I text that same thing to him, hey, Glenn, I think you're doing this wrong. We should be doing this. It sounds very bossy. Yeah. It's going to piss him off. So talk a little bit about kind of the rabbit hole of texting and how it can kind of balloon into something. Because we've, we've had that happen recently. Um, right. Not with clients. No, no, no. It's just uh, situations where things get out of hand. Yep. You know what's funny, too, is it, it almost falls down age groups, too. Mm. Just like uh, generally older people like to talk on the phone more. <clears throat> Yeah. And then generally younger people like to text more. That's just how the communications change between different generations, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to texting, you can't – there's no emotion behind texting. It's just words on mm -hmm. a screen, mm -hmm. right? There's no mm – -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It just – no, no. It just made me think. So let's talk emojis, okay? Okay. Because <laughs> this is where one of the conversations that I'm alluding to went all wrong. Because somebody used emojis in a way where they thought it was effective, and it actually had the opposite effect. Right. So what's your what's your take on emojis? I do use emojis, and I use gifs too. <laughs> gifs are better, I think. Yeah, gifs are hilarious. <laughs> and we had we had remember we had a conversation with clients. I think it was just it was Karen and Kimmy. Yeah. It was like me and you on a text conversation with Karen and Kimmy, yeah. and it was I think. It, the only thing we said to each other was gifts. And yep. we had an entire conversation With based gifts. on gifts. That's true. It was like the greatest conversation I've yeah. ever had over texting in my entire life. And I, I was showing my wife, I'm like, no one's saying a thing. We're just like going off on these gifts. I find the most random. You do too, but I find some random stuff when I'm using yeah. gifts. I try to think really abstractly. So I'll give you an example. Let's say it was like, I don't know. I'm at the market. And uh, I want I want to text my wife. Hey, do you want any produce? Like I might find something with like a pineapple singing, or I don't know, you know, just random yeah. stuff, and send it to her. And she's like, "What is this?" Yeah, you, you got to look for the most <laughs> obscure, like the guy in uh, a gorilla suit shopping for bananas at Perfect. the grocery store. That's what you, you need to look for the most asinine, ridiculous yeah. gift you can ever find, and then send that one. I think some of the funniest ones are the ones where people are uh, drunk and they fall over. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Drunk people are always the funniest. Like if you put drunk fall over and falling over or something <laughs> like into a GIF, there's like five pages of them. They're hilarious. <laughs> drunk fall over. Yeah. So back to texting. So yes. texting is good, I think, for little spurts of information. Yeah. Like, yes, I'll be there. No. I'll Confirmed. be there. What do you think about this? When you get into a conversation that requires emotion – where somebody has to decipher what your mindset is and what your demeanor is, I think it all can go wrong. 
Yeah. You know? Well, I think it's important sometimes to be like, hey, here's the overview. Call me and I can take you through it. You can text that to someone. That's perfect. Because it's just too much to text. And who who wants to get like a book this big on their phone? It's like you just keep scrolling and scrolling. At some point, you're like, I'm not reading the rest of this. Okay. Just call me. Here's my pet peeve of texting too is the scatterbrain thought. Okay. Yeah. So what I mean by that is uh, – so if I'm going to text somebody and I'm going to say, hey, let's meet at the restaurant and I'll get there early and park the car. I'll meet you inside, for example. Okay. That's basically like three thoughts. I don't need three separate texts for that. <laughs> and some people text it like that. Meet at the restaurant. Park the car. Right. Meet you inside. It's like every little update, you get a text. Yeah, I don't need ding, ding, ding. Like, just send it all in one. Take take the extra five seconds. Send it all at the same time. It's totally fine. I can yeah. I can read through three sentences. Exactly. <laughs> I'm much more like, I'll see you there around this time. Like, I can, everything in the middle, I got handled. Right. Like, what's you only need the most vital information. Oh, when's Glenn going to be here? Oh, he said he'd be here about 5, 5.30. Right. Done. So you need a text. So I think back to... When I'm talking about this uh, texting going completely wrong down a rabbit hole is that it can become confrontational where it's like the one person trying to one up the other one and they just go back and forth. And I've had this actually with like Chris over some of the topics him and I talk about. Yep. But it's more. You guys get after it. But it's more in fun, you know. But I know people that break up over text, um, which is ridiculous. You never have a conversation and it's like at the end of the day. It could just be a giant miscommunication, but right. nobody ever really wants to communicate. They just text each other to the point where it like escalates it's to over. the point. I'm done with you. Brownie face. Yeah. Brownie <laughs> face. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. I think overall, there's a time for a phone call, right? And I, I think too, and I'm seeing this with even some of our younger clients and people that we work with, there yeah. is a swing back to you know a handshake a phone call yeah. um the simple gestures that we've kind of lost through the virtual communication that we've been doing i do think that uh it's going to swing back a little bit oh it has to think about just what the human interactions we lose in our normal day life you have the express checkout at the grocery store yeah that's a good you point. have to talk to someone you have when you can go to the atm machine do just about all your bacon don't have to talk to someone so we're like removing all these human interactions good point at some point it's gonna obviously revert back and people are gonna be like yeah i want to shake your hand and see in person and, yeah and be less virtualized <laughs> speaking of- <laughs> with human interactions though but that's actually a good point and yeah because i've been telling my kids who are young like mm-hmm. look the person who has good personal skills and mm-hmm. is friendly can, can communicate uh effectively like i'm not doing right now uh right. they're gonna get a leg ahead in this next workforce because mm-hmm. you can't always just be in your own little world, locked away somewhere, right? Doing some little thing. Like, there's nothing wrong right. with that, but yeah. you need to be out there as well. And yeah. that's how a lot of business yeah. is going to get done. Well, that's a good point because I think it bleeds over into relationships too. Because yeah. if you can't communicate to whoever you're with, your partner, your friend, whatever, your family, effectively, then basically you're going to turn into a passive aggressive person because you're going to be holding it all in. Because you don't know how to talk about it. And then you hold it in and then you like strike out all of a sudden. Like, yeah, don't hold it. I in. hate you. And the other person's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know what you, it was funny though you were talking about? was We, uh, should, we should bring, we should have the couch over here. I know. I'm going, I'm going to go tangent right now. So you're talking about self-checkouts. Here's another thing. Yeah. I, I hate. Okay. The only time I really use self-checkout is uh, – when I go into like a market or a situation like that, and I know exactly what I'm getting. Yeah. And, and it's usually a couple items, maybe three at the most. And I go and I grab them real quick. I go to self-checkout and then I'm behind a person with a full cart who thinks it's a good idea that they can scan it quicker than the person that actually knows and has trained for years and years how to scan and bag stuff. They're going to be able to do it quicker. And then I'm behind them waiting for like 20 minutes, not 20 minutes exaggeration, five minutes though. For them to scan their, and I'm like, really? And I want to go like strangle them, and I sit there very patiently, fuming inside Uh, with my three items. Fuming inside, 
Then I'm like this because I don't even have like one of those baskets. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I didn't think I was getting more than three things. And you're they're in texting, my arms. You're texting weird gifts of people ramming their head through walls oh, to, to me, aren't you, yeah. at that moment? Exactly. <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> I will say, here's, here's my curse in life, though. Hmm. Whatever line I go into, I don't pick the slowest line. No. I, it, I make it the <laughs> slowest line. And I don't know how that works out. There'll be people flying through the line. It's actually And true. we'll be like, yeah, that one was moving fast. As soon as I step in it, something random happens. Like I've they can't scan it. the code or the person is paying and change or like Bizarre. there's something. It's me. It's literally Bizarre. me. I make it the slowest line. Or that's or that's the time where they change the, the shift and they got to count the yeah, drawer then they count the Yeah, then they count the drawer. Any weird random thing that could happen, it would happen. Right. So, uh, so let's, let's wrap up this whole communication thing. So, um, talk about like when we, when we put an offer in, you put an offer in for a property right now, obviously with everything going nuts, what, what, how, how do you handle like following up with that offer with that other agent to make sure that there's good communication, I guess is my point since we're talking about communication. Well, I think it's always good business practice to mail, you email off your offer. Mm -hmm. It's always good to follow up with a text, mm -hmm. letting them know that you sent the offer. Hopefully you spoke to the other agent mm -hmm. on the phone just to get a feel for how the sale's going. Sure. And some of some agents will give you a lot of information. Some will give you no information. And, mm -hmm. you know, then you just got to go from there um, mm -hmm. and use your best, uh, in, best guess on how to write up the property just based on your viewing and how busy it's been. Yeah. But and, and then after that, it's always good to kind of hit them every day if you can, but not be annoying about it. Right. If you know stuff's going on, like leave the listing agent alone. You don't want to be annoying. But yeah. you also want to be front of their mind too. Yeah. You know, I just thought of too, I never thought about from a screening standpoint, like if you're a buyer out there, you could be in any market, you know, in our market, San Diego, you want to come to us, but if you're in another market. Um, you should look at the way that your, your agent, your realtor communicates with you. Because if they communicate well with you and they're on it and you can have a conversation over the phone, then guess what? They can do that with another agent, which means they're going to be able to sell you to another agent. Um, as opposed to somebody who's very like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah very businesslike and yeah, we'll write not, com not communicative and, you know, well, I do five, 500 deals a year and, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that guy or, is not going to be able to sell you to another agent. You want somebody who can communicate well with you because guess what? They can communicate well with everybody. There's a flash. Here's my favorite, though. <laughs> Here's my favorite when you call agents. <clears throat> I'll be returning calls Monday oh through Friday from 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. And then also from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. If you... If, <laughs> <laughs> Monday through Friday. And you're like, really? People still do that? How? Like, that is ridiculous. How? Shame on you people that do that. How in God's name in this world today where 80% of real estate business is done in the evening I know. and the weekends that you just shut those people out? How, how dare you? Well, I don't. Let them shut them out. Then they come to us. No, I know. But and it's I just, get it. They're, I get it. They're busy, right? But Whatever. hey, guess what? We're all busy. That's called being, that's <laughs> called being rigid. Here's, <laughs> here's another tip. If you're looking for a realtor, don't find a rigid realtor. Find somebody who will work with you. Not be rigid and be like, here's my rules. You adhere to my rules or else. Right. That's ridiculous because guess what? They're going to have the same approach when they're submitting an offer for you or they're reviewing offers. They're going to run off buyers or run off sellers because you hired a rigid realtor. Don't do that. Yeah. And then we were working with a client who ran into another rigid realtor. Yes. And they literally ran off our buyer. It did. So this was, I'll tell the story real quick. So this is actually one of my family members. Yeah. We took him out. He loved the place. It overlooks um, San Diego Harbor. It's in Mission Hills. It's an entire floor, has its own elevator. It's fantastic. They were listed, I think, $899, right? Yes. Yep. So we wrote $850. Um, it had been on the it's market been for a long time. Yeah. And there's, for a long time. And it was listed a couple different yeah. times. And there's so. some reasons for it because it doesn't have any outdoor space. It's a, it's a little, I'm going to say it's odd, but it's, it's right on top of the five. It's on top of the freeway. Right. <laughs> Great views, but yeah, noisy. So anyway, instead of just getting back to us with a counter, it was this passive aggressive like, well, we need this. We need that. We need this. We need that. Even before answering us. So Yeah, it was 
It was, we don't think your guy's qualified. Like, we submitted the offer with a pre-approval letter. Like, yeah. Oh, we've never heard of your lender. He worked with one of the biggest loan originators in San Diego County. Oh, we don't like his company name. Like, really? Like, yeah. what is going on right now? Yeah. <laughs> and then when he finally, so they finally countered. And then we went and did a follow-up uh, viewing. And instead of trying to make the deal work, what did the, what did the agent do? was very uh, rude, passive aggressive to our buyers. To our buyer, yeah. And then there was miscommunication. There was it's a husband and wife. There was miscommunication with some of the answers they were both giving mm-hmm. him. They contradicted each other. And then instead yeah. of just being like, Oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah. You know, we we were wrong, they're like, No, you misheard us. You must you <laughs> must have misheard us. It's like, whoa, really? Yeah. That is crazy to say that. So anyway, yeah. So again, a rigid realtor don't do it. It's just bad news. Not good business. Nobody wants to be dealing with somebody like that. So, you know, we have uh, this week. What? On this show is the mailbag. Hasn't been here for a little while. We got the mailbag coming. So I I wrote down some of the questions that we got in. I'm going to read one first. Okay. Let's see what we got. Dear property guys, do you think inventory will start to rise? And what might that do to the market? John from La Mesa. Thank you, John, for the question. Oh, wow. Do I think inventory will rise? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. We just talked about all this. Like, we're we're in a historic inventory shortage. It's been, it's some, like, historic 50-year shortage we're seeing. Yeah. Um, and it's really hard to, for, where's the inventory going to come from? Because we spoke about this. It's hard, it's hard and expensive to build new homes. Right. Um, even if somebody did have to sell a home. Where are they moving to? Where are you buying back into in this market? So really, the inventory is coming from people leaving the state, right. which there are a lot of people leaving the state. There are. So, I mean, that's where some of the inventory is coming to. And, of, and of course, there's always the you know death or downsizing or divorce, and that obviously has – but it's, but our, our inventory is going to be really, really low. And then we have, well, what's going to happen with uh, when all the COVID relief stuff – oh, I said the C word. My bad. But what's going to happen when all the COVID relief stuff runs out and people have to pay these balloon payments at the end of their mortgages? Well, if you owned your home in the last six months, <laughs> say that facetiously, if you owned it in the last couple of years yeah. and you have a huge balloon payment, you're going to sell your home, pay off the loan, and you might put a little money in your pocket. So it's, right. it's not a distressed sale. No, I know. I read, I read going on to that, I, I read something actually in an article actually this morning. And they were talking about the anticipation of this, you know, stressed inventory that could come out of, you know, the end of this whole thing. So here's the stats. This is really yeah. interesting. Ooh, nice. So there's 5% of the mortgages are in forbearance of some sort. Okay. So that means they're not paying. They've made a deal with the bank. There's all these programs. So no, there's a moratorium on foreclosures and all that right now. We know that. Um, so 5% of the the mortgages and that's nationwide i don't know what it is in san diego particularly it's probably lower um but that means 95 percent of them aren't out so out of those five percent only i think it was four percent yes only four percent of that five percent are not having significant equity so in other words 96 percent of the people that are in forbearance of some sort have significant equity in their property to your point, which means yeah. they can just sell. They just sell, be a normal sell. Yeah. So there's it don't don't look for this like crash and there's going to be all these foreclosures and short sales. It does not it does not look that way at all. Yeah. Sorry, I wish I it did. I, I'd love to pick up some investment property, but it doesn't look that way. Me too. I mean, maybe in some parts of the country, of course, it might, but yeah, not here in San Diego. It can. It can. And just any any I think any agent you talk to out there, just the amount of cash. That's out there in our market. I can't tell you how bad it feels for some of our clients who are writing great offers. I know. And at staggering. the last minute, it's like, yeah, the sellers took an all cash offer. Yeah. Like, where in the yeah. world is all this cash coming from? And sometimes, especially when money interest rates are so cheap. So why is there all this cash getting dumped in our market? I know. That's some, a, that's what I don't understand. And it's sometimes in places you wouldn't expect either. There's yes, exactly. You know, you expect it in like La Jolla or vacation areas. Like, all right, rich people, you know, whatever. We've had this happen in like Lemon Grove, Spring Valley, places yeah. where places where you think like, why are they buying yeah, all cash? In these there? are like starter home areas, and people are coming in all cash. And we're like, what are you doing? 
Yeah. <laughs> I have a couple ideas. I probably can't say right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me ask my question. That was a great question, though. Yeah. Uh, John. John from La Mesa. Thanks, John. I don't mean to be all negative Nancy or Sorry, can I John. say that anymore? Negative Nate, negative Nancy. Sure. All right. Dear property guys, thinking about putting in a pool, mm. what are the hurdles and how much do you think it will cost? Jennifer in South Park. Well, Jennifer, good question, you Jennifer, wrote us at a we're really doing, good time. Because we're thinking about pools too. So Yeah. Glenn and I both have younger kids. And we're both looking at pools. My neighbor's looking to do a pool. His friend. So there's about four of us who are looking to do a pool at the same time. So you actually got us at the right time. So here's the truth. A pool in San Diego. Now, just a standard 15 by 30 pool, rectangular, hot tub, jacuzzi, pavers. It's going to cost you about $70,000 to $75,000. Yeah. And that's kind of the baseline, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, you can pimp it out. Oh, yeah. A much higher pool, but yeah, that's like the bare bones. Yeah. So figure 70 to 100,000 is going to get you what you want. So if you want like the, you know, the rock thing and the grotto, you're, you're at 100. Um, you start adding like, you know, fire features and waterfalls and you probably could even get higher. But definitely between 70 and 100,000. The pitfalls are this. Uh, one, you got to figure out where the hell you're going to put it in your yard. Yes. I've ran it. He has a bigger yard than I do. It's easier for him. But I've ran it. I've been going back and forth between two spots because I don't want to cut off the space that my kids have to like play. But I also want it to be close enough to where the entertainment area is so we can incorporate fire pit, barbecue, the deck, all that stuff. So it's kind of like this balance you do. And then the other thing, too, is that because there's so much improvement going on, I think it's probably the same way in every city. The permits are taking two months right now. Yeah. And they didn't used to take that long. You used to be able to go in, I found out, and get a permit the same day at the counter. You really? Yeah. Wow. But our offices aren't open yet in person, so Maybe they're doing not. everything virtually. And I guess these people sit at home. They wake up late. They sit in their bathrobe, I guess. You know? I don't know what they're doing, permit people, but you're not doing your jobs, you know? Well, um, or maybe there's so many people staying at home and everyone's working all, on their home all at the same time maybe. that they're overloaded yeah. and they don't have enough staff to keep that's, up with it. That's a glass uh, <laughs> half full uh, perspective on that. <laughs> I believe everybody's lazy these they're days. They're sitting in their bathrooms. Every, you guys out there, everybody knows this. Every time you order something, you ask for a service, you're waiting on uh, a quote, whatever it is. Oh, Oh, no, because of the C word, the C word, the yeah, C word. I'm so tired of it. That's gone. It's done. Everybody's working. Just give me that crap, man. Get it here. Really? It's like, yeah, it's the ultimate excuse for anything. Yeah. And now oh, why can't we do that? Oh, coronavirus. Yeah. And everything's oh. more expensive. And it's just, it's a big excuse for people to get screwed. That's what's happening. So. Yep. Yeah. But anyway, back to the pool. So <laughs> 70 to $100,000. Definitely walk it out. What you want to do, and the one thing I did like about what Rudy did was he took that landscape spray paint and he spray painted basically on the grass and my concrete where it was going to go. And it actually, I could stand it and actually visualize it much better than if you just kind of drew it on paper. I think that's very helpful. Um, but make sure you can live with where it is because once it's in, it, it's not getting moved, obviously. Um, but yeah, I would definitely do it, especially if you have kids. Um, as they get older, the, the one thing I do like is the, the friends will migrate to our house. Yeah. And as they get older and there's hangout parties and you're worried, about, are they drinking? Are they not drinking? Who are they hanging out with? Hopefully they're hanging out there more often than not because you have the pool. So that's what I like about it. They too. will be. Yeah. And then you get to swim in it and, mm. you know, chill in the hot tub. And mm -hmm. you already get to chill in your own hot tub, which is I'm very jealous about. But yeah. whatever. So what was, was that Jennifer? Is that what her name was? Yeah, Jennifer in South Park. Mm, South Park. Nice. Now, if you have, She'll have a, very a canyon awesome in pool. South Park, Jennifer, you make an infinity pool, and that's a whole different ballgame. You can add another 30000 to that, unfortunately. Yeah, exactly. But those things are pretty sick. i got to yep. be honest. Get in that canyon, have the infinity edge. I unfortunately will not have an infinity edge. Nah, me either. But I'll definitely have an edge you can jump off nice. into the deep end. Nice. That's all I care about. Yep. So today we talked about communication. Huge, huge, huge in the world, right. in our business, in your relationships. Pick the right people to be involved with, whether friends, family, well, family, I guess you're stuck with, but friends, relationships, uh, work relationships, people that you can communicate with. Don't put up with their crap, okay? There's no reason to. 
We talked about a lot of stuff, gifts and emojis yeah. and working in your bathrobe. Yeah. All right, cheers. Not <laughs> All right, Glenn. cheers. Today's not Glenn's birthday, by the way. Not my birthday. Okay. I'm Frederick. I'm very festive. I'm Glenn. We're the Property Guys. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.